Good morning um, and welcome to Tea with a Druid. Uh, this is episode 108. And it's nice and early here in Sydney. Uh, good morning from Germany. Welcome, Daniel. Um, it's, it's seven o'clock here and it's uh it's been a really interesting time for me living in australia um welcome linda it's great to see some uh, familiar faces 80. um before i get started though something um that we do here in australia before any uh, gathering whether it's a personal one um in our own private practice or as a gathering of of many uh peoples we acknowledge uh the traditional custodians of the land and i here in sydney in the south western inner suburbs of sydney uh, live on the gadigal wangle land and uh, the gadigal wangle land uh, stretches from um, uh, port jackson down through to the cooks river and they're part of the Eora tribe so uh, the Eora nation so i'd like to start by acknowledging the ancestors of the past and the trauma they underwent at the hands of colonization and i'd also like to acknowledge the the ancestors of the present and the trauma they carry with the the dispossession of the land but i also like to acknowledge the ancestors emerging and the important work that we all have to do to heal the land and acknowledge that this is aboriginal land it always has been and it always will be. So um, thanks for joining. It's been, as I mentioned, uh, a really, a really challenging time for uh, I think everybody globally. But here in Australia, we're witnessing on a daily, hourly, uh, by minute basis just the depths of compassion, of gratitude, um, and and grief uh, that um, we we all. Um, feel uh, at a time like this when we experience something that we're familiar with. Uh, fire is something that's always been part of the Australian landscape. It's something that's always been here at this time of year. But what we're witnessing and what some of us are experiencing firsthand um, is something beyond anything that we've lived through in our lifetimes and certainly um, what what we're experiencing is is uh, deeply concerning. It's it's as I mentioned something that isn't new, but it's something on a on a level that um, hasn't been experienced before. And as as someone living in an urban environment, um, I'm not directly affected by fire. What I am affected for, by um, are the ash and the smoke that from those fires coalesce and condense into these urban environments and, and really uh, make help, just really makes us struggle to, to just go about our daily life without bearing witness to just the enormity of, of the tragedy unfolding all around us. Um, and, and, and being drawn into that trauma that is the, the difficulty that um, those people must be experiencing on, on those front lines. We've got across the country um, mobilised resources, um, rural fire services uh, spreading out throughout the throughout the Eastern Seaboard in particular, um, and their their level of commitment and dedication has just been just been unprecedented. I think that. The enormity of what we're seeing and the enormity of 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 the the depth of our grief and and trauma is really just um, consolidating that focus of will and intention and compassion and allowing people to uh, in in spite of holding that grief and living with that grief be able to take it and 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 turn it into something really powerful and transformative healing. Um, Welcome to everybody coming in. I see there's a number of people. Welcome, Julianne, California. Andre from the Netherlands. 
welcome. Um, so for me as an urban druid, um, I, I sit with this grief in, in, a, in a very different way because as I mentioned, you know, I'm not, I'm not living on the front line, but instead um, what, I'm, what I'm struggling with is, is the compassion for the land that I have such a deep connection to. Um, the way I connect with that land and how do I take that, that feeling of grief? How do I work that, that desire for deep compassion uh, into something meaningful that's going to help those who need it the most or heal the, the land in areas that need it the most? Um, and also witness within me um, what this means for, for my druidry in the future. Um, how do I continue this practice? Is there something that I need to look at inside me and, and understand? Hi, Chris, how are you? So I think as someone like many of you do walking the wheel, we um, often drop in and out of that deep witnessing process. And, and when we do that with, um, with, with when, while we're holding grief for the land, it's it's something that's that's potentially quite um, traumatic. It can be something that's quite um, difficult to process at the time. Often, it, it results in a lot of anger. <laughs> it's it's hard not to separate the experience of what we're going through, regardless of whether we're experiencing directly or or symptomatically. That that feeling of, of deep anger um, for, for um, inaction um, by those who, who have the authority to, to do that and to bring about change. Um, but at the same time, it, it, it also helps us understand and work through um, some of the, the ways that we might be able to transform that grief and transform those, those feelings of of, of helplessness into something that's really uh, quite positive healing and, and you know, peaceful and, and, and an expression of love, um, a deep expression of love for the land. So I think that um, one of the things that is really important when, when wrestling with grief is actually being mindful of what that means to, to sit with that grief because you know, when what we're witnessing potentially is something that is going to become normal, and and that that terrifies me. Um, I, I I recognize that uh, being in a place like Australia, uh, the land and the animals have have evolved with fire, um, and will continue to evolve with with the landscape. And that's, that's quite a challenging concept for me in some ways because I see the things that I love so dearly um, and, and those places I love to visit and to feel complete, not just connected with, but healed by, um, and to see them in crisis and to see them in stress um, and to think that it will take generations to recome, recover from this um, is really challenging for me. Um, but as part of that, that resting with that grief and that deep witnessing uh, and mindfulness of what that means for the landscape and being present, just really present in that moment helps me not just witness but also transform that grief through my love for it into something meaningful, something that I can feel somewhat restored by because I know that even though in my lifetime, I will need to bear witness to the struggle and bear witness to the trauma and, and have to work with that process of healing, um, that, the, that what, we're, what, what I'll be contributing to is something that in, in hopefully generations to come will, will adapt, will be restored. Um, and we'll continue to be transformed by these natural processes in a in a in a more in a more um, healing way. Because right now, what we're what we're not seeing is enough change uh, on those fronts where these these situations are being made worse. So um, 
one of the biggest criticisms coming out of Australia right now is is our lack of leadership, um, and and commitment to acknowledging um, the causes of of this deep trauma um, that we're witnessing. Because it's not just as a drawer that I'm feeling this. Everybody has been motivated. Just <laughs> on the weekend, actually, um, I even went to a fundraiser that was organised by drag queens, and every cent raised went to the Royal Fire Service. Every member of our community, every member of, of the Australian community and globally, they, they are in solidarity, supported and motivated by these, these just inexplicable um, events that are unfolding. These, like I said, happen, but they're happening on a scale that we haven't seen before and, and it's really it's really beautiful to see all the levels of the community come together and because of this we're starting to see cracks in in the in the bureaucracy we're starting to see cracks in in a in a way of thinking which has held us back from really transforming our policies on on climate um and and this has been uh, the, the, the direct result of the power of community and the solidarity of our resolve to address these these issues. But as Druids, it's 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 um, something that um, we need to perhaps even look at on a, on a, on a, on a deeper spiritual level too. Um, I certainly know with. Uh, with my practice as an urban druid, um, I live in the, as I said, the, the uh, in Sydney, and I'm surrounded by several parks, and I spend most of my time in in a mindful practice of walking through those parks, connecting with those those places. But I also then radiate further out and around Sydney, and and draw that energy back in, and. And what that helps do is is what I was just describing. It helps bring into into alignment all those different parts to really bring about change. And and as a druid, to do that as a practice helps uh, me work from the the you know the confines of where I am, but also connect outwardly with those with those um, beautiful places around me. Hello, Catherine from sunny Florida. <laughs> um, but what what um, in in this in this um, search for meaning and and um, and ways of of exploring grief as an expression of my druidry, but through mindful grieving, I discovered um, uh, Dr. Samrit Kumar and um, who wrote a book about mindful grieving, and I I found that so so incredibly helpful because. Um, what what it talks about there's there's a number of things that I found really um, useful in it but when we talk about our grief for the land or when I talk about my grief for the land what um, a phrase that he used was um, the grief originates from our our, uh, our loss to nurture nature uh, or to nurture life and and that that relationship. Um, that desire, that 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 grief that comes from the loss to to nurture life, comes from our love of it, and um, it's it's it was such a it was such a potent idea, this idea of love and grief being um, one and the same, and when we when we grieve, we don't always um, grieve because we have lost something we love. We grieve because we're in love with what we're grieving for we, we we're in love with it we want to nurture it we want to we want to restore it so um it was a really it was a really powerful idea and um and what what it 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 showed me was um just how restorative being mindful in in my grief i was able to use that 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 relationship with love to restore the the balance within me um, and to restore that in that moment my ability to act because often in these moments of of deep sadness i, I 
you know, I, I'm kind of overwhelmed. What can I do? Um, you know, and how do I rest in this mindful place to be able to transform it into something um, that will allow me to not only make a change on the physical level, but make a change on, on the spiritual one. Um, oh, one of my favourite cups. This actually, I don't know if you can see it very well. It's got an etching of uh, an elk or a, a deer skull from the deer Evelyn in South Australia. Hello, Evelyn. Um, and so what, what I thought would be um, really valuable uh, was um, as part of this, this idea of, of mindfulness in grief and mindfulness of, of just the trauma that we're seeing across the globe, but also here specifically in Australia, how we might in, in, be able to bring into, a, bring into balance perhaps our, our understanding of, of that grief and its relationship with love. Also remembering that here in Australia, the landscape does have a relationship with fire. And I'm not even contemplating right now just how many extinction events we've witnessed as a result of this, tra this traumatic event. But instead trying to focus on the restorative and the transforming power that fire can have and trying to bring that back into balance of the grief uh, for the loss and, 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 and then try and turn that into, into something positive, trying to turn it into something that I can uh, use um, both physically and, and, and spiritually um, in my practice. I think that um, one of the things with, with that idea of, of, of uh, where our practice intersects with what's happening in our environment, we talk about intro, in introductory, we have the, the wheel of the year, which a lot of us walk, um, and those are the eight major festivals. And they hold, they, they're, they're containers for specific power, for specific intention, and, and they're wonderful for providing that structure, that outer structure. But here in Australia, we wrap that around a changing landscape, which um, is opportunistic. It's, it has these damaging yet restorative relationships with fire, with water. Um, it's animals, the animals that live here that we share this place with, uh, have learned to adapt to. Um, and that in itself, where that, where that intersects, where, where those things come together is, is within me as a druid, within us as druids, it's where those things come together. And it's in that, in that point, it's at that point where we're able to use our practice to try and focus that transformative power that comes from acknowledging um, the grief, but also the love and our desire to nurture life. That um, even, even, um, in events like this, tragic events like this, we still have that ability to find a natural place for our grief, and um, in in that in that moment, in that in that present moment, in that mindful state. So, what I will do now? It's, I've been talking for a while, and my goodness, does a time fly. <laughs> um, what I thought we'll do, it's um. Let's have a, let's just have a brief meditation now. Um, what I'd like to do is, is just invite you now with me to take a breath. With the land beneath us. Take another breath. And now give a breath for the sky above us. And now take a breath. And give a breath for the sea all around us. And may the blessings of land, sea and sky 
I invite you now to get comfortable. And if you like, close your eyes. I'll be opening my eyes periodically to check on time. But I invite you now to just gently close your eyes, remain comfortable. And imagine yourself safely in somewhere that you're familiar, a beautiful outdoor setting. Perhaps it's a forest, perhaps it's your local park, but this place is familiar to you. This place brings you joy. Every time you visit it, you, you always smell the seasons changing and you might smell at the moment the frost on the trees or perhaps the rain on the grass. We invite you now to take a moment, just breathe into this place, this safe and comforting place. Perhaps you can hear birds or small animals, maybe dogs. Your park might be near a busy road. Just let those sounds in. Let them in. You're part of this environment, but you're safe. And with the breath, just allow the breath to sink into your chest and deep into your abdomen. And set it down into the earth. Past the grass, and the soil, past the tree roots, anchoring you safely in the earth. Perhaps the heartbeat of the earth is subtle, quiet, restful. Perhaps it's vital with life, awakened by the sun. But I invite you now to draw up that energy past the tree roots, past the soil and the grass, the ground beneath your feet and draw it up through your legs and up into your heart. Draw it up and feel it warm, your chest. And now with a breath, I invite you now to send your consciousness up. Send it up into the sky. Perhaps the air is cool. Perhaps it's filled with light or it might be even dark, but sent it up, up into the sky. Past the clouds and into the stars. The bright energy of the sky and the stars, the universe pouring into you now, pouring into you through the sky the air around you into your skull, feel it swirling around in your body as it meets the energy of the earth, mixing with the energy of the earth as it slowly fills your chest, fills your shoulders, down into your abdomen, your legs, your arms and your head. Just feel for a moment present, mindful of this place, this safe and comforting place. This place brings you peace. 
this is a place. You have a connection and a sense of purpose. A place where you can nurture life. Connected with the earth below us, the sky above us. May you find in the deep, still center of your being peace and gently throughout the greater circle of humankind. May you radiate that peace. Perhaps you'd like to touch the ground and feel that peace within you, reading out across the land, across the oceans, and across all the lands. Feeling it healing, powerful, restorative peace. When you're ready, just stand up again. And holding onto that peace with a breath, I invite you now to open your eyes when you're ready. This place, these places we visit, uh, this is where we can hopefully hold that peace and send that peace out to the places that need it the most. I think one thing that is really important to remember that at, the, at times like this, um, change can sometimes be inevitable. And, and, and what we witness, deep witness uh, with the land is that the land is a, will adapt, the land will change, and the land will resurge and, and restore. Um, it, it's in our grief, we, we mourn the loss, we, in our love for nurturing life, uh, what is lost. But keeping the knowledge and holding the knowledge that life can be restored that in response to to the grief of the land comes hope i i in solidarity with all of you want to share this share this idea that in these sacred places that we have we can share that message of hope we can share that message of peace and hopefully share that love that love we have for nurturing life and may that give us solace and in that mindful moment restore the love uh, from the grief we hold so again thank you all for joining me um, this has gone by incredibly quickly <laughs> so much more to say um, and um, and i hope that uh, I get a chance to read your comments later and thank you all for joining me have a wonderful day and to all those who have contributed both financially spiritually personally um, it, the, the gratitude um, on the ground is is immense and um, for those of us who who uh, who are living with this um, I send you my deepest deepest sympathies my love um and i wish everybody a safe a safe day and perhaps a good night thank you